Do you remember when we were new builders many, many months ago? Like, it's been almost a year. Yeah. Now we're experts. At something like that. Kidding. I had this bright idea. Let's take all the time-lapse video I've been recording. Granted, I didn't start at our very, very beginning with time-lapse, but... Please, for good reason. Yeah, I don't think we have enough. Nobody wants to see that. <laughs> I got some good video of our first Rubens, and it's horrific. Uh, check out our top five build moments. Uh, with 26 minutes to set a rivet. <laughs> Insane. Um, so we've stitched together about 13 minutes of time lapse and ultra fast forward. So you can start seeing the journey of a Vans aircraft RV 14 kind of being built at the different stages and see big parts, small parts all come together, come and go from our workshop and eventually turn into this big giant thing that's behind us. Um, not, yeah, we got a lot of the tail kits still inside the house, but those, you know, will be back here. They're not installed here. Can't see off camera, but they're, they are over there. But this time lapse really walks through everything, kind of starting with the core of the fuselage. That's where we started. Started the time lapse, uh, but we started in the fuselage. So, uh, but as with the fuselage started to come in together, um, couple of rivets that very tough rivets that had to be drilled out um i'm kind of i keep looking back at some of the early rivets nothing s stands out at me as oh i see a couple here and there yeah and then when you want to get back in and fix yeah well we better get to that before we close them up no i mean they're not bad it's just like oh i could have done it better yeah so but it's fun seeing our progression and it's fun watching it come together uh how we have to be ingenious about how we move this thing around, stand it up on end when we're working on bottom scans, how we uh, hang it from the garage door opener. <laughs> okay, we never hung it from the garage door opener, but we did use it as a backup just in case our mounts are... Emergency support. Yeah, you know, we, you know, pilots always have plan B, uh, but we worked through it. Then we took a break on the fuselage kit when we got blocked by missing parts. Back order. It was back ordered at the main landing gear brace. Um, we had a handful of things back order that just kind of trickled in. Half the stuff we sent back because uh, we ended up doing mods that required us not to need it. I kind of wish we were a little bit more proactive about that so they didn't, we didn't have to pay for shipping both ways, but got a good, got a good credit that helped pay for some of our wings. I think we sent like $2,000 worth of stuff back mm -hmm. already. Flat motors, brakes. So we've done custom brakes and custom wheels and all that. Um, but I got to work on the um, the tail kit. Um, the tail kit was quick. It, it, did, it, it's, it was like stop and go. It was like vertical stabilizer. Boom, like a day and a half. We did that in less than, you know, uh, an easy weekend. But we we also had the tail kit, my surgery, and then tail kit. So true. Yeah. But then, um, so after we did the vertical stabilizer, it was onto the rudder, and that's taken a little bit more involved. Yeah. Got a little bit more steps, a little bit harder to reach in, and that's where we had our first introduction to rolling the lead and edge. Oh, that was fun. You were so cussing it. Oh, I just I was like. <laughs> <laughs> and to be honest, I mean, do call Vans Builder Support, but their their advice is suck it up, Buttercup. You got this. There's, Keep going. There is nothing they can say that will make it better, but they are right. It is not hard. It it, it you just got to get past past your brain and just 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 roll it. It's patience. Yep, and it's, it's it truly is patience. And there's far better channels and videos out there in YouTube talking about that than us trust us we got it done i'm happy um but then we get to the horizontal stabilizer and it's like oh this is big horizontal stabilizer was a challenge um obviously i was the one getting my hands down in there but and that's where having some specialty bucking bars became really important mm -hmm. um yeah there's some smart people out there who make some really good tools <laughs> support them they're they're helping you trust me um there are some bucking bars you use for like 15 rivets, and that's it. You, uh, there's a few... Uh, you think you're going to use them for 15 rivets, but you never know when you're going to need that shape again. Yeah, you just pull it out. We uh, we kind of tried using it for a tough rivet back in here. It didn't end up working, but 
It's good having those options. And how about that decision to get that card one to do all of our big dimples? That was the best Valentine's Day gift we could have gifted ourselves. Absolutely. I mean, when you first bought it, I was like, eh, well, do we really need it? And then, yeah, uh, it's an absolute wonderful tool for building an airplane. See, wife knows best. She does. Absolutely. Always listen to your wife. And then as, as we're working on this horizontal stabilizer, um, really big, big part. It just, I, as we're working on it, it was just an awe with the, the sheer size of this thing. And, you know, we're working on this internal structure and lining up the little jigs that we had to make. Um, you know, building advanced aircraft is not only working with aluminum, you end up working with wood a lot more than I expected, having to build all kinds of things to hold things and every getting time, in there. Yeah, just that never ends. But then uh, getting in, setting all those rivets, uh, using whatever we can to prop it up, a uh, little uh, storage containers to prop it up, um, and uh, the never-ending priming. Oh, oh. yeah. Yeah, it just seems like you build, 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 and then scuff, 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 build, 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 go prime some more, go prime some more. Spend a whole day in prep. Yeah. Yeah, not everyone primes their airplane. Not everyone primes their airplane with rattle cans, but it, it's really worked out well for us. Uh, I do like having uh, all these ribs and uh, parts primed. We're not doing any priming on skins, except for the um, uh, elevator trim that accidentally got primed. Oh, uh, oops. Uh, that, that'll be Evoke's problem later to figure out how to paint over that. It's primer, so they should be able to figure it out. Um, but it's it's interesting how we alternate between like big parts and then just a whole bunch of small small parts and just assemble new subsections. And here we are putting more ribs and bulkheads together with zero clue of exactly where does this fit into the big airplane. Here's a whole stack of parts, and you kind of see that it makes a skeleton. And sure, the plans have. Um, you know, pictures at the beginning, but it's um, surreal as it starts coming together. This tail cone was a section. I mean, it wasn't a hard section, but it was just so much to it. <laughs> it was, and it's like in never enough workspace. So we're flopping between, you know, the, the little sawhorses and our table going back and forth. Uh, another one of those where you're putting things together, but not for real. <laughs> just, just click going in place, and then oh, let's get some wires out. Oh, oh you had fun with that. I did. It was kind of fun to. I mean, the wire, the wire harness was pre-made. The instructions were like really detailed. Do this, do that, and it turned out to be a lot simpler than I thought. Um, I'm really thinking, you know, zip tying it in there is like. I think there's some better ways, but we never got around to yeah. instructions send to zip tie it in yeah there's a i've seen some people put um sleeves around all the wiring on um, too late now this is kind of closed up at this point but um yeah the wire's in there it should work um so now we finally get to start putting the rivets on and the tail cone starts to form its shapes so all these parts that i didn't know where they belonged before or how they're going to play together. Now you're starting to see how it all kind of starts to shape up. And at this point, our fuselage still looks like a surfboard. It's not even a canoe or a bathtub yet. So it, it's, you know, you can see it's a fuselage, but this is the first piece that's really starting to come together that looks like an airplane for us. And it's it's kind of exciting to come through. And then, um, of course, uh, time lapse of us recording one of our episodes, so... I dressed up for that one. You did. And then once the tail cone is complete, now we didn't get time lapse of us closing up the, the tail cone. And this is where we had to build yet another jig to turn the whole fuselage up on its side to get those rivets down the bottom. These were the really big rivets. Yeah. I thought this was the big join when we put the, the, the forward fuselage and the mid fuselage together. But, um, man, the, the big, big join... Uh, that was far more exciting. Epic. Now we start getting the side skins. This is where we turn our surfboard into a bathtub. 
Um, this was another exercise of put all the skins on, uh, get the um, get everything match drilled the way you need it, take it off. And then we had to do the the latch, the JD Air latch. Yeah, the JD Air latch definitely um, slowed down the left side quite a bit. Um, but don't forget, uh, countersink everything. And uh, <laughs> the longer rounds, the, uh, the, the mid fuselage brace all gets countersinked. Uh, I, hundreds and hundreds of countersink holes. Uh, I think, was this before? This is before we got our drill press. Yeah, this was before we got our drill press. I think the other side we actually had the drill press for, which actually made countersinking a lot easier. And then we get to this stage of um, putting it on. So now this is all about the JD air latch. You know, the JD air latch, that took several months. Oh, that took a little bit. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm still... I, still recovering? Still recovering from that JD air latch. This uh, bruise will eventually grow out of this fingernail. <laughs> uh, but the, I'm glad we did it. Oh, it looks great. It looks beautiful. It's in. We followed the instructions on the YouTube channel that talked about how to make a template for that JD air latch to cut it out just right. Uh, I still think we could have done a better job, but I'm, I am very happy with the way it turned out. I had bought a different set of rivet sets to go in the rivet gun, specifically a long rivet set for the number three and number fours and also some offsets. They really came in handy here as I'm working around the wing spar. You know, we spent I don't know, probably weeks on this. It seemed like uh, between the different uh, life events going on, there's a lot of start and stop uh, as we're getting the, the skins on. But the left one definitely took longer because of the latch. The right one felt like it went pretty quick. Um, I wouldn't say it went quick. It went quicker than the left one. Quicker than the left one. But, um, it took a while. But same thing. You get it clicked on, and then you take it off. You get all your ma uh, your countersinks done. Yeah, see you doing it by hand, but we got the drill press. In the yep. Then you get the card out, set all the dimples. Yep. Now, the card is not designed to, it, it will do back rivets really well uh, for number three rivets. Uh, we were told it is not to do number four rivets. I did not listen. And it actually set these rivets great. So these are number four rivets that we use the card to back rivet on. And um, both sides, it, they turned out fantastic. So uh, with care, uh, use it to do do your back rivets. We've got to stop and uh, selfies. selfies, and I think no, that was a FaceTime. I think that was probably with Rick. No, I think that was with your sister. Ah, we got the call that our wings were going to come. Um, apparently, we jump jump line. He says, "Well, make sure you have a cart ready." So we had to take a break from building and build our wing cradle. Got the ring, wing cradle done and back to uh, riveting on that side skin because we wanted that done before the wing showed up. Um, riveting the side skin, once you get to this stage, it's just reaching around, find the right step stool. I recommend someone a little taller than me to help you. I, you did fantastic, though. But you, you just won't give me the, um, the bucking bar, will you? No, I'm better at it. She, she she is better at it, but sometimes I gotta get in there and uh, help buck a hard to reach rivet. You only think I'm not good at it because I only get the hard ones. Well, so so, <laughs> but and eventually the side skins come up and um, it really starts looking like a big part of an airplane, and we celebrated that. Yeah, bathtub, big bathtub, and that tail cone sitting over there in the corner, kind of ready to. <laughs> take shit, you know, it's like, join me, bring me together. So that's what kind of comes up next. Um, you know, hint, hint, if you look in our background now, by the time we recorded this, the big joint is done. There's no Clecos holding it together. It is permanently joined, but we're going to cover that in a separate episode. Uh, this time lapse ends as fuselage, all the big parts are kind of ready. And now we're going to move into a very, very different phase of this build. Excited? Very excited.
So stay tuned in our next episode where we cover the big joint. It's uh, one of the biggest milestones in the van's build. A lot of builders celebrate this moment, rightfully so. Two big pieces become one. <laughs> Your garage becomes smaller. Point two, become one. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, did I mention the garage becomes a lot smaller? Uh, we'll, we'll cover the big join in an episode in our next episode. See you next time.